politics. When did Judah lose politically? Uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Who was Judah? Judah was the, the carrier of the staff, meaning the boss, all right, as far as kingship or rulership or political rule. And naturally, that fell upon the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So spiritually, we don't have anything to worry about. But it so happens that he sits at the right hand of God, which is fantastic. But he expects us to manage rulership under the law that he has left us in his word. That's one thing about this great nation. Our constitution was taken from it, but occasionally you will have a group that will filter in that would like to pull totally away from the word of God. And those are the groups you have to be aware of and alert. You know, mathematics is really, it can be difficult, but with all the modern tools we have today, it's really kind of simple. Since the beginning of time, one and one is two, and two and two is four. And occasionally people like to play with those numbers and change them. But in reality, they're still there. So we have to use a great deal of common sense. Now, if you were to, let's say that you had a good reputation and you could borrow large sums of money. And let's say that you borrowed a million dollars. Wow, wouldn't that be a responsibility? But anyway, you started a business, and that business kind of, you know, it takes a year. It takes one year to build a business, actually, if you're good. <laughs> Sometimes it can take longer than that. But in one year, never, never expect in a business to really be grounded and going great guns in less than a year. At least this has been my experience, and isn't that what we all draw from? I think so. I mean, anybody can get by and so forth, but I'm talking about if you're really a good manager and do good planning, by one year's time you should be established. But let's say that you have to borrow more money and you're warned about usury in our Father's Word. Because you see, money isn't free. You're going to have to pay to use that money. And in, it's estimated by the experts that in 17 years from now, as far as our nation is concerned, it will take more than our tax rate, the base that comes in in this nation through taxation every year, that we will break even, that will pay the interest if we don't borrow any more. But it will take everything we make just to pay interest. Is that good business? I think not. In other words, if you, let's go back to your little business that you borrowed the million dollars on and then you have to borrow another half million, you know, to tide you over at six months because Things are not going as you thought, and yet you've got a good reputation. I mean, you're good for it. Your signature is. And then all of a sudden things go sour, and pretty soon you can't even pay the interest. What's going to happen to you? Some of you may have experienced this at one time or the other. I trust not. I hope not. But it's not that unusual anymore. You're going under. And quite frankly, that's where we stand in this nation today, if something isn't done. Now, I'm not preaching politics today. We're going to the Word of God. But I want to show you why I think that this message is necessary today. Because we're being, unfortunately, uh, rolled over by uh, false stories. And it's a strange thing. Socialists really underestimate people. They really do. You know, they think out in such a far left boom boom land that they can hardly communicate with anyone. So therefore, you know, they feel like that they are superior because no one can really understand what they're talking about. But the average person that knows one and one is two 
and two and two is four, and has been blessed by Almighty God with common sense, and are not biblically illiterate, that everything that goes up sooner or later comes down. That's just the law of God. It's called gravity. It works the same way on usury. So if something isn't done 17 years from now, and quite frankly, I disagree with them on that particular estimate, because if spending increases in the rate at the rate that it has in the last five years, we won't make it to 17 years. Let's pray that the Prince of Peace returns before that time. But we still have to plan like it's forever. Did God tell us there were going to be times like this that adults would actually play like children in politics? Open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 3. This chapter is about the political downfall, I should say the political ruin of Judah. How did it happen? We'll learn a lesson from God's plan because it's also prophecy as to what will transpire if people follow the antics mentioned here. Chapter 3 and verse 1, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Now, the famine, prophetically speaking, is not for the bread they're thinking about, but the bread that is the body of Christ, which is to say, hearing the word of God. Amos chapter 8, what is it, verse 11 or 13. And unfortunately, that has been taken away. Very few people have the privilege of hearing God's word, not man's, but God's word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and make an in-depth study of it, where they're really fed and have the intelligence to know what's happening whereby you can protect yourself behind the wall of God. There is one, and he's that wall. So, he warns, I'm going to take it away. What is that? Rulership. I'm going to kick it back to the people. Not this king that God appointed. In a sense, that's what happened when Christ um, took over that kingship, basically, at the crucifixion. The kingdom of God had come because we have the freedom to repent of our sins, to believe upon him, and actually be inoculated to what happens in this world. We're separate, though we still live in it. But we must use our uh, knowledge, which comes from God, to protect ourselves. So let there be no mystery. God said, I'm going to take it away. Common leadership. Now, that is to say, common sense leadership. Everything about God is natural. And he takes it away, and unnatural things can kind of slip in. And unfortunately, with our present uh, administration, we found when they first took office that their kingpin put a lot of things into operation that were very unnatural, especially in our military. Verse 2, the mighty man, the man of war, the judge, and the prophet, and the prudent, and the ancient, that means the those that are wise from age of having researched, experienced, going to take them away. The captain of 50, the honorable man, and the counselor, and the cunning artificer. It comes from our word artificial, or is a kin word to artificial. Somebody that's real good at making something artificial, and the eloquent orator. 
Inasmuch as all wisdom comes from God, what is an eloquent orator is one that knows of God's word and is able to relate it or to expound upon it or to repeat it as our Father stated it, whereby you milk from it the truth that gives you sanity, peace of mind. For quite frankly, even though things may not look rosy, you can have peace of mind and be perfectly at ease. In this generation, verse 4, what's he going to put in that place? And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And boy, sometimes the rulership of this world indeed acts and thinks as babes. Children, childish. Hang up and tie up things, an entire nation over semantics of words. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not complaining about this because it beats getting out in the street and shooting it out, all right? Hey, we don't need that in this country. You know, at least we, at least we argue it out on a floor rather than shoot it out in the streets and the hills. So, but yet at the same time, what I want you to know is don't be surprised because it was written long ago, it would happen, all right? Verse 5, And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor, the child, shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. In other words, the children will be uh, intolerant of their elders or disrespectful to their elders, and the base, that's to say a criminal, against the honorable. When you pull good judges out of the judicial system and allow the ju judicial system to sink to a place that a person is not under a jury of their peers, that's, that word peers is a very important word, then you're going to lose by the law of precedent. You can't, you can't win. We've seen examples of that where murderers get off scot-free, walk free. And we've seen honorable men put down. It comes to pass. And again, don't let it be a surprise. Be informed from your Father's Word. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying... Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. You take responsibility. You take it. Many might say, well, that wouldn't happen in our family. Well, let's go one more. Seven. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of you. In other words, I don't want to be responsible. I, you know, it's difficult to understand how some people run from responsibility. A lot of people use blame of others to pass it off, you know, as a cop-out. Rather than towing the mark and taking the responsibility for what we do. For your family, somebody's got to do it. Never be afraid to step up and take responsibility. That's called reality. That way you don't mess around and get off living in a dream world where that it's so easy to put things off rather than face reality and get it fixed. Straighten it out. If it's broke, fix it. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. But never be afraid to take responsibility under God's hand, because you'll always win. You may trip, you may stumble, but with the blessings of God, you're always going to win sooner or later. When you get the wrinkles ironed out, you will win. But if people continue shrugging responsibility, example, there should have been a lot of telephone calls made this month. It's our duty as a citizen 
to speak out when we feel that a group is just outright lying to us. Do you know what they're doing to you when they get away with that? They're insulting your intelligence. They really are, and smiling about it, laughing about it in the cloakrooms. All in the name of politics. Well, okay, don't be afraid of responsibility. Verse 8, for Jerusalem, and of course this was the, Jerusalem is the home place of Judah. David founded it. But it's all over the world now. Is ruined. And Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings, that's to say their words and their deeds, are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Anytime a nation goes against God, anytime a nation boldly in the one of the highest offices of the land, in the name of politics, will lie to its people. Do you think God approves of that? When it is so obvious that is wishy-washy, a reed shaken in the wind. Do you remember Christ's words against John the Baptist? What, do you, what did you go down there to see? Some guy like a reed in the wind will listen to this 30 minutes and change his mind here and there 30 minutes and believe that? No, you didn't get that from John. And you don't get that from people that take responsibility either. Words and their deeds do not stack up. That's what he's saying. Verse 9. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. You know what we call that today? Coming out of the closet. Coming out of the closet today, folks. I'm proud of it. I'm advertising. And hide it not. Woe unto their soul. For they have rewarded evil unto themselves. That rewarded evil means they advertise in the Hebrew tongue. Absolutely. Advertise the fact. Well, brother, you just don't understand. It's the times. I know. God said it would be that way. And if you're not biblically illiterate, you would have known it a long time ago. Going to come to that. It is the times. But also, at the same time, take note of what happens to those that participate. Verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. I want you to remember that verse. God said, you say to those that are trying to do right, that will take responsibility, that understand what's going on around them, it will still be all right for them. And their rewards are piling up. Yours are. You can have peace of mind. You can be successful. You can be rich in the blessings of God, and that means both with peace of mind and finances. But you've got to do it His way. You've got to ob observe what is prophesied, what will come to pass, and know how to deal with it. There's one thing that always works. It's worked uh, when, talk about uh, the times, it worked when I was a child. It worked when I was a young man. It worked when I was middle age, And it still works today. It's called common sense. You can be successful with facing reality, using common sense that you gain by the wisdom of God, from God. And you don't have to worry about anything. But do understand it. Don't be duped by it. That's what he said in that verse 10. You that try to do right, though you may slip, it's going to be okay. Verse 11, what, what about the others, though? Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with them. For the reward of his hands shall be given him. 
it would be real easy to go off and say, well, what about those that come out of the closet? They're getting their reward. It's, it's not Band-Aid. That won't patch it. That won't fix it. It's called AIDS. Is that from God? No, it's from filthiness. You know, but didn't he, he warns though. It's not his way. Twelve. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. Hey, don't, don't think this is an insult to women. It says those are... When it comes to combat, women were considered weak, weak at this time. It means your leaders are weak. Well, that part of it's right. We're going to be showing a documentary in the very near future. I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it, but you're going to see kind of a report of what the women did in wartime in Europe among the Celts. Hey, they, they helped um, Papa's uh, gun fodder and fired it if he got a little slow. You're, <laughs> you're going to see what women of God, I don't call them weak is what I'm saying, but be that as it may. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Don't you let it happen. Don't you get wrapped up in it. Don't you get involved. Don't think I'm not, don't think I'm trying to tell you not to vote. Don't think I'm telling you to participate. I'm saying don't get involved in it whereby you lose sight of God and his hand and his comforts. And his riches. Or you'll be just like they are. You'll lose your path. The path that Christ set for us. That's where our success comes from. When many are going down. Your growth will be going up. I could use this ministry as an example of that. It's about that time of the year that ministries all begin to say, Oh, Lord, December's coming, and you all are buying gifts for each other, and you're forgetting us. So why not do the right thing and send a little something in advance? You know? Well, that's nonsense. I'm going to tell you the truth. December is the best month any church ever has. Right? It's the biggest month as far as finances are concerned. So don't believe that stuff. They're doing it to beg. I really don't know what brought that up. I really don't. <laughs> Other than I want to point out the blessings of God if you will just do it His way and let Him take care of that kind of stuff. All right? If you're a servant of God, you don't have to beg. He didn't expect you to be a beggar and He doesn't expect you to be a poor person forever. If you'll do it his way, you will be very successful. It's just that simple. Hey, a lot of people pay $2,000 an hour for really high class uh, financial advice. That, that would be pretty high, but it happens. And you've got financial advice right here that's worth more than that. If you take it all in and do it his way, I'm, I don't want anyone to become a stockbroker or anything like that. Hey, that's beside the point. That's just part of the blessings of God that he adds on because you do the really important things. All right? Don't get caught up in it where it takes away from any part of your relationship with our Father. Let me put it a little different way. Don't let it take any time that you normally give your father in prayer or praise or just talking with him. By that I mean get so involved you forget. Satan loves that. Verse 13, the Lord standeth up to plead, to accuse, and standeth to judge the people. He knows 14, the Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. He starts at the top. For ye have eaten up the vineyard 
The spoil of the poor is in your houses. If you overtax, mismanage, get, so in, get our nation so steeped in usury, do you know how much usury we pay each year? I wish I'd checked it out. I, I know right now it's, it's staggering. It's more than what Medicaid cost, Medicare rather cost. We give it away every year. What could we do if we balanced the budget and paid our debt? You see, we're blessed enough by God we could take care of everybody. But then welfare states make second-class citizens rather than can-do type citizens. It does help those that need help. Those handicapped take care of them in good shape. But to take perfectly healthy people and say, you can't do anything. You're not educated. You just need our help. Give us your vote. And we'll help you. With your money. Okay. I mean, you know, hey, why not be generous? It's, they used to I've seen votes bought with everything from from PG soap to turkeys. Okay. In in my lifetime in school board elections and a few other things. Don't get caught up in it. All right? Do not get caught up in it. Verse 15. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? The worst thing in the world that you can do to a poor person is to take his dignity. Then he's really poor. And unfortunately, that's what a welfare state at times does when it says, this people need special attention. That's really talking down to them. That robs them of their dignity. We're not equal with you all. When they are. God created his children and he liked what he had done. So, they do oppress God. All in the name of good, decent people. Be helpful. Sometimes you can hurt when you're trying to help if you're not familiar with God's way. Verse 16, Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go. Do you know what mincing means? It's back when you and the missus were really courting and she would look over at you and bat those eyes like this, you know, and just... That's mincing. Bat. Boy, I don't know what that does, but it's effective, all right? Anyway, <laughs> as they go and making a tinkling with their feet, that means they kind of play the heart of it a little bit, okay? 17, therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. He'll make them naked. That's how you will enter heaven if you don't have any righteous acts. There's a deeper meaning in this in the Hebrew, and I want to share it with you. What the scab, uh, the, a scab, the crown of the head. What, what is up here near the crown of your head? The gray matter, your brain. And what this word scab is, is uh, so fake. It's a fake, all right. It means to scrape out. Now think about that a minute. Think deep. To scrape out the crown of their heads. That means, that means in a spiritual sense, to take away their common sense. To scrape away their knowledge and wisdom. That's what he said he was going to do back in verse 1 and 2, remember? Well, this is kind of the deeper aspect of it. And many people very soon with the spurious Messiah are going to have the scab. It's called the mark of the beast, all right? Deeper meaning, but so that you don't lose track of what God is trying to tell you here. Verse 18. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery 
of their tinkling ornaments. It's really, that's the finery, okay? The finery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls. Now, that means they're networking of all the beauty aids, and there's nothing wrong with looking nice, all right? And they're round tires like the moon, but this kind of begins then to lean on toward worshiping other things in their practice. It's real easy to get mixed up in doctrines of the world rather than the Word of God if you're not real careful. It can sure be smooth, friend. It happens in some churches, not to, uh, not to be against them. I'm certainly not. Because where would we be without them? Every one of them. I'm talking about Christian churches, of course. 19. The, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, this is to say they're... Um, decorations, and there's nothing wrong with wearing jewelry in moderation, okay? There's a far cry in wearing jewelry in moderation than, I don't know, I've never been to, to a house of ill repute to, to see how they dress necessarily, but I've seen pictures, and I guess they really stack it on, I guess, all right? Well, we don't need that, but anyway, that's what it's talking about. I don't want anybody to be a guilt trip on a guilt trip because they wear a tie tack or, or ladies wear real nice earrings and necklaces. That's not what it's talking about, all right? Verse 20, sharpen up for me again. The bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, the headbands and the tablets and the earrings. Now, God slipped one in there for you. It's the word tablets it's it's really two words in the manuscripts listen carefully it's beth beth rit nefesh in english we used to call it beth nefesh you know what beth means in the hebrew tongue it means house nefesh is your soul the house of your soul. Right up here. Again, he's warning you. Common sense. Stick with your father. He knows. He will instruct you. And what did he say earlier in this chapter? Hey, for you that are trying, it's all right. You're going to do fine. Now, do you have faith? If you have faith, that should say, all right. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. That's true faith. You don't have to. But it's terrible when they treat the house of their soul in that manner, that they allow it to be scraped out. To say, soft heck. Verse 21, the rings, the nose jewels, 22, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, this is party clothes, okay? Party, 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 party people. Nothing wrong with going to a party occasionally, but that's all they think about. The mantles and the wimples, and those are neat. And the crisping pins, that means, I don't know why they translate it crisping pins. It means purses, all right? I don't know. They just had different names for stuff then, I guess. Maybe it was so the Father could slip one in there occasionally for us. I don't know. Okay? Uh, and uh, the wimples are kind of a neck binding, which is still fashionable in some nations. And nothing against it, again, as long as it's moderation. 23. The glasses. Now, that's one for you. The mirrors. <gasps> How well I look today. And the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. This is, it, it, it means the underclothing, all right? When they're dressing in the mirror, it looks nice and nothing wrong with things looking nice as long as you're not dressing yourself up to follow the spurious Messiah or to do wicked things against the kingdom of God. 24, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, 
there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. Instead of wearing fancy clothes, you're going to wear a rope. What's a rope used for? Bondage. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girdling, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. The brand of the soldiers of the spurious Messiah's army, Christian army. All decked out. This is exactly the opposite of the gospel armor. Don't ever forget it. 25. The, thy men shall fly, fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war. This is with deception. Quite simply and frankly, not a bloody all-out war, but when they cry peace, peace, peace into the one world system of deception by the spurious Messiah. It's sad when those that are in a position that are supposed to be mighty and stand the ground become the first to be sucked in by it. Verse 26, And her gate shall lament and mourn, and she, being desolate, shall sit upon the ground. That's the picture of utmost degradation. There's other scriptures that say, while she's sitting there upon the ground, she'll be praying for the mountains to fall upon her as it is written, or pray for death as it's written in Revelation chapter 9. Because she realizes she's been deceived. Be real careful in these times. When so much attention is paid to politics, and should be, rightfully so, but never lose sight of what's actually happening. People are being conditioned to accept wonderful peace when it comes. All right? Following babes. God said, I'll let it happen. And that's not all that bad. Turn over with me in closing to chapter 9. Not really all that bad when you can mature and when the babe matures. And when you have milk, always of the word, make sure that you always transfer to meat rather than remain in milk only. Verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government, that's politics, shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. What government do you want to be involved in, friend? I mean, God's already told you where the blessings are and what government. And I'm not, do not ever think I'm, you all know how I stand up for our government. I'm very loyal to it. I don't like what it does sometimes, but I've shed blood for it at one time, and I would do it again. So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but I'm saying there is a higher government. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Hey, that's for me. Upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. Boy, think, total justice. That means everything is fair. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will, I repeat, will perform this. It has been performed. And you serve him. Never forget what Paul said to the Hebrews. He said, you know, you claim to be churched. And for years and years you go on with this and milk, milk, milk. Until pretty soon you need have need of a teacher yourself to come into switching to the next chapter. Perfection, only the word in the Greek is maturity. 
of full age. So make sure that your maturity advances, that you take hold of the knowledge that God gives you when you have eyes to see and ears to hear. And don't get snowed under by politics. By participate, yes. Observe, yes. Quite frankly, enjoy. But do know what's going on. There's nothing new under the sun. And make sure that you stay under the government of the child that did not remain a child but became a mature, full-grown man and loved you enough that for his government, he didn't settle for a retirement, but he laid down his life so that you and I on repentance could have forgiveness and knowledge through his wonderful counseling to understand events of this world and not be washed overboard of the ship that's going to enter into God's election to fight against the spurious Messiah, lies, misdirection, and falls in dignity. You can all, you'll never be ashamed if you follow him. All right, Father, we thank you for the written word. Thank you for being with us this day, Father. We know that there is not a government in existence except you have ordained it as it is written in Romans 13. We look, we study, and we try our best to understand, Father. And with your word, it makes it much easier. Thank you for that, Father. Give us that direction and leadership. For we follow our King. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. Amen.